الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام عليك يا صفوة الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتكون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم وقد صدقت أنت يا سيدي يا سيدي يا سيدي يا سيدي يا مكي يا مدني يا عربي يا قرشي يا حاشمي ويا سيدنا يا سيدنا يا سيدنا يا حبيبنا يا طبيبنا يا حبيب المصطفى المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم Respected elders, brothers in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we've been blessed with another occasion of Jumatul Mubarak. And this is that Jumatul Mubarak in which, before it arrives Ramadan Karim. Alhamdulillah, Allah has chosen us to be amongst those Muslims who have reached yet another Ramadan. And we still have maybe one day or two days before that month reaches, but we all make dua that Allah gives us the opportunity to attain this month. Because remember brothers, there is no greater month than the month of Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the one who does not, the mafoom of the narration is, that the one who does not attain forgiveness, the one who does not attain maghfira, salvation, in the month of Ramadan, then when will he attain forgiveness? Oh, Meaning, the month of Ramadan is that month in which the doors of mercy are opened, the doors of forgiveness are opened. Allah forgives more in this month more than any other month. This is why the Messenger wasallam said, this is not only a good news, but it's also a warning. Meaning, if you cannot attain forgiveness in this month, then when will you attain forgiveness? The ayah of the Qur'an in which I recited before you, Allah Almighty, the cherisher, the sustainer of the entire universe, He addresses the believers and says, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, O you who believe, kutiba alaykum usiyam, fasting has been prescribed upon you, kama kutiba ala lazina min qablikum, like it was prescribed upon those before you. Now, who are those that came before us? Those that came before the previous nations were the Bani Israeli, the Jews and the Christians. We can remember, fasting is not something which is khas, which is specific, that was revealed upon this nation. It was something that Allah had prescribed to the previous nations. If you look at the ayat before, Allah is addressing the Bani Israel. And remember, who are the Bani Israel? The Bani Israel, remember, our... Um, the great prophet Ibrahim a.s. he had two sons Ishaq and Ismail from the lineage of Ishaq a.s. you have the Bani Israel you have the Jewish nation and then from the lineage of Ismail a.s. you have the Bani Ismail, the Arab nation through which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came through it was through that lineage. Now remember, the Jews, they had this superiority complex that we are the greatest nation. Right? There is no one greater than us. This is one of the reasons why when the Prophet ﷺ came from the Arabs, they didn't initially like it. Why? Because they were expecting the final messenger to be from amongst the Jews. But in the previous verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds them of their asal, of their origin. They say, no doubt you come from Ishaq, from the Bani Israel. But look at your origin. Our origin is the same. That our origin is Ibrahim a.s. Because Ismail a.s. is the son of Ibrahim a.s. from which the Arabs came. Ishaq a.s. is the son of Ibrahim a.s. from which the Jews came. So Allah is reminding them, say, do not have any superiority complex. Do not deny this messenger because of where he came from. Because the origin is the same. Because Allah reminds them of the Ka'batullah, the one who established Ka'batullah with Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
And then if you go on to the next verses, Allah then talks about the chaining of the Qibla. Because where was the Qibla initially? It was Baytul Maqdas in Jerusalem. And Allah says that I shall change because he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because when he was in Makkah to Makarumah, did you know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could face in a direction where he's facing towards the Kaaba as well as facing towards Baytul Maqdas at the same time. It was possible in Makkah to Makarumah. But when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina to Munawra, it was no longer possible for them to face Kaaba and Baytul Maqdas. But it was the desire of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's heart that I want to face Kaaba to Allah. Why? Because that reminded them of the origin of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Right? This is why in our uh, Darud, in our Salah, what do we say? We say you send Darud upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi had this desire. And, and because Allah loves to please the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah changed the Qibla for his Riza. Khuda ki Riza chaate hu to alam. Khuda chaata hai Riza hai Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is another thing that the Jews did not like. The changing of the Qibla. Then Allah then reminds us, coming out of the verse that I will quote in front of you, that look, fasting was not just prescribed to you, prescribed to those before you, to the Jews. But Allah says, that do not make the same mistake that the Jews made. Because when they were prescribed fasting, all they did was stop eating, stop drinking, and stop the intimate relation with their spouse, with their wife. But the main goal, is this the main goal for fasting? This is not the main goal for fasting, because otherwise when the non-Muslims, when they object to us, and they say, look at you Muslims, you're just starving yourself. You know, many of you probably go to work and fast, and they probably ask you, you can't even have water. You can't even have, this is probably the common question. But remember, this was not the main goal of fasting. Allah says in the Quran, كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ What is the main purpose of fasting? The main purpose of fasting is not to starve yourself from food. It's not to st stop yourself from drinking water. It's not to ha stop yourself into my relationship with your wife. The main goal for fasting is to attain taqwa. Now, you may ask, what is taqwa? The word taqwa comes from the word wikaya. The word taqwa comes from the word wikaya. Wikaya in its root meaning means protection. This is why it's interest, interesting that the Prophet ﷺ said that the fast is like a shield. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the fast can protect you like a shield protects you in battle. So what does it protect you from? It protects you from the fire of hell. It protects you from evil deeds. It protects you from you know, the evil asarat and the effects of, of shaitan. Right? So, our main goal in this month of Ramadan, and we should all make an intention, is that we're not just going to fast purely for the sake of starving ourselves. Right? Because many people will think, oh, fasting has come. You know, some of you may be happy, some of you may be, you know, slightly dreading here a little bit. <laughs> you know, especially in, in you know, these months, it's still, you know, a good number of hours we have to stay hungry for. But remember, those who find fasting difficult are those who do not understand the purpose of why they fast. Those who know that the ultimate purpose is to attain taqwa. And taqwa is to attain the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is to attain that inner feeling that Allah is constantly aware of your states. That there is never a moment that Allah does not know about your states. And there is never a moment that Allah does not even know the depth of your heart, meaning what you're thinking in the depth of your heart that no one can know. Allah even knows that. Right? So how does fasting grant us taqwa? Because remember, in the month of Ramadan, that which is usually halal has become haram. Because you're eating halal, yes it is. He's drinking halal, yes it is. He's having intimate relationship with your wife, halal. Of course, it is. But that which is halal in the 11 months has become haram in the month of Ramadan. Allah. Now what is the first of all, what is the philosophy behind this? Because remember, there are people in the month of Ramadan, they may not eat, they may not drink, but they are still committing sins. They are still missing their salah. They are still backbiting, they are still lying, they are still cheating, they are still talking to ghair mahrum women. They're still doing all these many haram acts. This is like, for example, somebody saying that I'm not going to eat any junk food. 
And we ask him, why do you not eat any junk food? He says, it's bad for me. But then he says, but I am going to eat poison. What would he say to that person? This person just said, I'm not going to eat junk food because it's bad for me. But then he says, I'm going to eat poison. What do we say to him? You know, Akkadha you need to search intellect a little bit. Even though junk food is bad for you, but poison is there, a Poison will kill you. So in the same way, in the month of Ramadan, that which is halal for you has become haram. So you are stopping yourself from that. But that which was haram throughout the 12 months, you are still committing that. So you are not fulfilling the true purpose of the month of Ramadan. This is why we say that the first step to attain taqwa is to refrain from haram. Because remember, when we are fasting, and there's a nice, you know, juicy, I don't know, peri-peri chicken in front of you. And you know it's not time to eat yet. So what stops you from eating? One is that you know that you are a Muslim, and that you are being commanded to fast. Mm-hmm. But the, the main reason, because only you can eat it, well, what stops you? The reason that it stops you is that you know that Allah is watching you. Now, this is like a training now. You are training your nafs. Your nafs is that which uh, calls you to fulfill your desires. You are training your nafs that you know what, I know I can eat this. I know I have the, uh, the ability, the qudra to eat it, but I'm not going to eat it because Allah is watching. Then Allah then says, if you can do that with a chicken, then do that with lying as well. Okay. Then when you want to lie, remember it's like a chicken. That you know that Allah is watching you, Allah does not like you to lie, so I'm not going to lie. Do the same with looking at layer mahram woman. <coughs> you know that Allah does not allow you to look at layer mahram woman. Then you're going to refrain yourself. You are training your, your nafs. Right? But just before I finish, because we are short of time, I just want to give you a practical method of how in this month of Ramadan, we should all make an intention Allah. that the first step to attain taqwa, the God consciousness of Allah, is to make tawbah. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, tawbu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. You cannot attain taqwa until you first do tawbah. And how do we practically do tawbah? Do we just hold our ears and say tawbah, 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 Allah mafi? No. Remember, there is a practical method of how you make tawbah. And I shall present an acronym which will make it easy for you to remember the four conditions of Tawbah. This acronym is called PRAN. P-R-A-N. Okay? Can we all remember it, inshallah? Mm-hmm. So we're going to plan to pran. So the P stands for passive. So whenever you commit a sin, a while the sin you have committed, we all human, we all make mistakes, the first thing we have to do, we have to ask Allah for forgiveness for the sins of the past. That's what Tawbah is. To ask Allah for forgiveness for the sins of the past. It's not, for example, I'm about to commit a sin. I say I'm about to punch someone in the face. And before I punch him, I'm like, Ya Allah, I go into my little corner, Ya Allah, forgive me, I'm about to punch this guy in the face, Ya Allah, forgive me. That's not Tawbah. That's actually making a mockery of Tawbah. Because you should never plan to sin. But if you have sinned, then you should ask Allah for forgiveness of the sins of the, the past. That's P. P stands for past. The R in Pran stands for remorse, regret. So whenever you ask Allah for forgiveness, you should create this feeling of nadama, of regret in the heart. Because some of the sins that we commit, we will not commit them in front of our parents. If our friends found out about the sins, they will laugh at us. But we have to understand that Allah is always watching us. So we need to create this guilt in our heart that how can I commit this sin in front of Allah? And if you cannot shed tears, and at least try to make the face of a crying person. Because then there will come a moment when you'll be able to shed tears. Mm-hmm. And the Prophet sallallahu said in the Mufum of the narration that the one drop that comes from your eyes when you're shedding tears before your Lord is enough to extinguish the whole of hellfire. Right. That's R. So P stands for passive. The R stands for remorse, regret. The A stands for Allah's sake. Whenever you make tawbah, you make tawbah for the sake of Allah alone. Allah. Not for the sake of people. For example, if you committed a crime, and then you see the police chasing after you, and then you start making tawbah, tawbah, Ya Allah, forgive me. Is that tawbah for the sake of Allah? No. 
This for the fear of imprisonment. So whenever you do tawbah, you should do it only for the sake of Allah, for His pleasure and in His fear. And the last condition is N. That whenever you make tawbah, you have the stronger intention never to commit the sin again. N stands for never. We have, as long as at the time of tawbah, you have this firm intention never to commit the sin again, this is called tawbah kamila. So just to summarize, P stands for passive. R stands for regret, remorse. A stands for Allah's sake, and N stands for never again. May Allah give us the ability to act upon what's been said, and grant us tawbah, istiqama in our tawbah, and allow us to bless us with Ramadan, so that we can attain taqwa. Ameen. Wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alamin. Thank you. Please play your summa, please.